been invited to a barbecue, but I don't really want to rock up with a rack of ribs. I know. I'll just take some meat decorative instead. Now, when you're making bunting, the first thing you need to do is try and ascertain what it's for. Queen's Jubilee, uh, house party, uh, you just got out of prison. The theme will kind of dictate how many flags you're going to make, or it could be the space that you're trying to fill. Either way, let's say the equation is that each flag is 20 centimetre in width. This is based on you uh, using the template from my website, Sequins and Slippers. Uh, then the number of flags that you'll need, let's say you're doing one flag per letter and you're actually putting like a, a, an iron-on letter on each flag and the word is congratulations. So that makes 15 letters. Obviously you need an exclamation mark if you're being a stickler for that sort of thing. So that makes 16 letters. Then you need two flags either end approximately just to make it look a bit more well balanced. So that's 20 flags in total. Then you've got to account for the gaps in between each flag. Let's say it's five centimetre gaps. So you've got 20 times by 5 centimetre gaps, and then you've got 20 times by 20 centimetre in width for each flag. And that will give you how much bias binding you need, what length you need, and also it will relate to the fabric you're going to use. Now, let me show you what I've got. I've got this bias binding and matching thread, which is what you'll need for either or whatever colour you're going to go with. Then you've got the different types of fabric. Um, I'm basically, I don't know if you're the same, but I'm drawn to things in fabric shops. I'm kind of uh, emotionally driven when it comes to picking out fabrics. I know, it's sad. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, these are the three I was drawn to, uh, not least because they were cheap. Three pound a metre. Can't say fairer than that. Now, before you start working with fabric, you've got to press it. Um, it doesn't matter whether you call it ironing, you have to do that first, otherwise the fabric's slightly out of alignment, it won't be true when you're cutting it, and it'll be a bugger when you're trying to sew it, so press it first. You might not want to, but you'll do it here, and you'll also do it at various stages, so get used to it. Now, first thing you need to do is cut out the flags. If you're going to use my template, uh, they'll look a bit like this. When you've got all the flags you need, start pinning them together, right sides together. So in other words, the the fabric that you want to see on the outside of the flag needs to be inside each flag and pin them, just two pins either side in the shape of a V, right? Like that. When you've done them all, sew the edges of each flag and then it will look like this. At which point you take the pins out. And this bit's quite important if you want it to have a good finish. Uh, get your scissors and very, very carefully cut the edge of the tip. So be really careful not to cut into the thread itself, but cut almost like a, a closer flag shape just to the point of that flag. The reason for this being is when you actually turn it the right side, side out, if you haven't done that, it will all bunch up, whereas it'll sit quite neatly and press quite flat when you turn it the right side out, which is what I'm doing now. Now I'm gonna use, because I'm naughty, I'm going to use my scissors just to help ease that point into a true point. Now, the reason why I say I'm being no naughty is because if you use your scissors, be really, really careful not to push it right through the tip. You just want to be very gentle about it. Use a pen or even a knitting needle. I don't knit yet. Uh, but if you've got a knitting needle, that's even better because it's a soft point. Then, draw whatever it is, knitting needle, pen, whatever, right along the edge of that flag so it's all pointed out to the furthermost point that it can be and press okay the pressing is very important i've got like a cotton mix well it's actually true cotton so it will take a good steam on both edges that's what you're doing obviously and then what you do, want to do obviously is repeat that for every flag when you've got all your flags pressed you then want to put them onto the bias binding. So I'll get that back out again. Unravel it. Like so. Place the flag on the inside of the bias binding. Take the pins out. Fold the bias binding over the flag. And yet again, 
press. Now the reason for this, if you don't press, you'll actually find that you're fighting against the binding's natural urge to open out. So it's much easier if you just press it first and then add a couple of pins. You might be able to hear Rod's chewing his chew. Oh, he's involved. Uh, when you've done that with all of the flags, and obviously if you're going to separate them by five centimetres, then you want to do that as you're going along. Make sure it's five centimetres. Trim any bits that aren't going to fit into the bias binding. Just make sure that your finish is nice and neat. And when you've done all of that, you're ready to sew it together. Hopefully with a sewing machine. Could be by hand. Either way, I'm hoping you've got a sewing machine because it'll make it much easier. So let's do that. Little tip, when I'm making bias binding, I do a bit of a reverse stitch at the beginning and end of every flag. It's just so that if you're doing a really long line of bunting and it goes wrong somewhere in between, you're not going to have it unravelling. If you have to start again, you can just take it to the last flag. So that's just my little tip. All right, to the sewing. <laughs> You'll notice I also uh, created a bit of a loop at the end, obviously, so it's ready for hanging. I'm just going to neaten that off. My only regret is that I didn't have bunting when I first brought my boy home. 